Okay, so this video is going to be how to connect your 1810C to Voice Meter Potato. Now I'll just bring up Voice Meter. So I've got my two side by side or on top of each other. If you've not seen my overview of the 1810C, probably best to go and have a look at that first. Uh, but if you are specific, if you know what you you know what you're doing, you just want to see how you connect these two together, then you can then you can just stay with me here for now. Okay, so I've got a whole series about voice meter, so I'm not going to go in too much into depth on setting it up generally. I'm just going to talk about setting it up specifically with the 1810Z. Okay, so first off, I've got I've these up here. These 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 are my virtual outputs, but I've actually redirected all my system audio to go straight to the, the 1810C and isn't actually coming in here. So those aren't be those aren't being used. The microphones on the 1810C are here. So how I've how I've selected that. So as you can see there's two of everything here. You probably you if you're familiar with voice meter at all you're aware that it has both WDM and MME and WDM is generally the better one. Although sometimes you can start hearing static on it. I haven't had that static problem since I've had my 1810C on my previous audio interface, it would happen periodically. I would, I would get it and then changing it to MME sorted the problem out and MME still sounds fine for the most part, but WDM is, um, supposedly better. So up here we can select mic line, mic inst line one, two on the studio 1810C. Now that connects to, and I'm just going to bring up my rubbishy photo. That's these two. It's a stereo pair, remember? So one and two both come in on this channel here. That microphone is actually disconnected at the moment, but that's where I connect it when it's, when I'm using it. Uh, and then to rename it, you have a choice. You can right click up here. So for example, if I delete that, it says hardware input one, which is not very helpful. So I can do 80, 2035, and it renames it there and here. Also, if you right click on the fader itself, you can also change it. Same again for this one, but this time I want three and four. WDM, my client in three and four. And now that's going to pick these two ports. And that's where this Shaw SM58 is connected. Now you'll see on both of them, mono is selected. If I unmono it, that connect, you see that that's fading off on channel four and channel three is just, is by itself. You should still be able to hear it in stereo because I'm not actually picking the mic up through voice meter at the moment while I'm recording this. If you'd connected this to channel four instead of channel three, so this microphone is plugged into three here. If it was plugged into four, it would just appear on this side. I'm going to put that back into mono and just in case if you weren't aware of this, cause I wasn't until I tested it out. If you mono doesn't just copy one, um, channel three onto channel four, it mixes both channel three and channel four. So if you plug something into channel four only, and click the mono button, it will still give you the stereo signal of both. And if you have two mics plugged into, into channel three and four, and you click mono, it will mix both of them between the, the two tracks. Why, why, why you would do that? I don't know, but you could, you could do that. You, you might have two different microphones that you want to pick both the signals up and they're in different positions. Um, more likely is that you would have two, like a left and a right microphone and you would leave them. You would leave them in the stereo mode. So you were picking up both channels independently, but whatever, you know, whatever, whatever your use case. Okay. So outputs now up here is where you control your output devices. I can send that to whichever of my outputs I want to. And there are four sets of outputs, which are these four channels here. And those correspond to let me get the sound control up again. Okay. So the outputs are these four sets here, four sets of four pairs, main out one, two, line out three, four, line out five, six, and SP diff out 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and SP diff. So why is the SP diff called that if it just appears like that? Well, that's to do with if you use this bypass function, instead of coming on to these input channels, they will go out either to the main, to three, four, five, six, or to the SP diff. They'll actually go directly to the to the port on the back. Let me bring up my other amazing photo. So your port's on the back. If bypass is selected, and this can be a bit confusing, if bypass is selected, these outputs, main one, two, comes, goes straight out there. It doesn't go, doesn't go through those, these, this set of faders. It just goes straight to one, two. If bypass is selected, three, four goes to three, four, five, six goes to five, six, and SB diff goes to SB diff out the top one there. And that's that's coaxial SB diff out. Remember, I said last time this ADAT optical port isn't SB diff. That's the ADAT standard, so it's it's not compatible with the normal what you not get on a normal Hi-Fi amp or the the motherboard SB diff out that you'll get. Okay. However, in our case, bypass isn't selected. We haven't got bypass selected. So those four channels come in there, but that just explains why they're named the way they are. Cause they don't need to be, if they can be sent to any of these outputs, why do they need to be named like that? But that's, that's for when bypass is selected. They're named like that. And I know I'm laboring that point a bit, but I, I, I just want to make sure you've, you understand that because you know, it could cause, it could just cause you a bit of confusion. You might just scratch your head as to why. And it, so, right. So we've established that's where our outputs are going. So those four channels, assuming we've got bypass selected and you can select them up here, main out three, four, five, six, and the SP diff. This model doesn't have an ADAT output on it, which is good because, uh, if he did, it would have another eight channels as it does on the input side. Yeah. That's something well, don't get, don't get yourself caught out on these inputs. They've got the ADAT one, two. So you, you look, if you want to, oh, I want one, two, and then you're listening and you can't figure out why you can't hear it. And that's because you've got nothing plugged into your ADAT. You actually wanted this one too. And I'm speaking from experience. Um, so the ADAT's got actually uh, 16 channels on it because it's got uh, eight stereo pairs. So, okay, okay. so in this case, I've just decided I'm going to use the SP diff one. I could have used any of the others, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the SP diff and it, it doesn't matter. So that, that, that one comes in here. This blue one. If I'd have picked one too, it would have been there. So on, so forth. Uh, and the reason I've actually, the reason I've chosen that one is because of the other three are being used for other stuff at the moment. And I'm just using that as like a, as a spare one. So now anything I, I play through that will come out of that channel. So th this is just be as a, as a simple setup, we've got one microphone and we've got one out output. I've renamed that headphones, but really it, it could be audio interface, SP diff, or it could be speakers. It could be whatever as i've got it set up these two uh the speakers on my front monitor and speakers on my right right hand monitor so those aren't going through the audio interface the that sp diff i actually set up that as part of my voice meter video guide and that's actually that's using the optical output on the motherboard so that's that's where that's said but this one is being sent to the audio interface and it could be sent by any of those channels so there's nothing actually going out to it because nothing's being sent. So I'm just going to unmute it and I'm going to send the microphone I'm recording on over there. So I can actually hear myself talking now. Um, it shouldn't make any difference to you. And I'm going to just open the, and you can see now the signals come in here. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate something I was talking about in the last video that's muted, but I'm still hearing myself. It's still coming back out here. Um, so whatever I do, it doesn't matter because this is going to the computer via US, USB. It comes in and it ignores this and then sends it back out. 
this only affects what goes out of the main. So I can hear myself, but I'm hearing myself through this. If I mute that, I can no longer hear myself, but the signal is still coming in. And if I unmute it and turn the volume right down, I, still, I can't hear myself again. Now, if I was to unmute that, and I'm just going to do it, and I'm probably going to regret this. Um, yeah, I can hear myself echoing. It's not it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but there's a mono signal. You see that just on the left hand channel, and it's come back in here as stereo. I'm just going to mute it so I can hear myself think. Uh, I'm just for the demonstration i'm going to show you if i change that to main one two um it doesn't really make much difference i can hear myself talking again now but it's i'm here now see the signal's over here so it's just used a different one and just and i'll put that back on the sp diff one just just a bit of an explanation of what i have done if you've seen my voice meter videos and i explained how you root your system discord or music into this you could send those all out to your audio interface through here. Like you could give, use three of these channels for those, those three things. Like eight, so that a one could be the system, a two could be the Discord, and a a three could be the music. Oh, um, yeah, I wanted to I wanted to mention this loopback. Now the loopback I've selected is is virtual one two. Now. That's set up from firstly here, you select virtual. If, if virtual is not selected, then it won't appear as a, as an input. Where is it? There it is. It's there. If you don't have that selected, that will disappear. So yeah, so the virtual, now the virtual works. And I explained this a bit in my last video. If you select mix one, two, I mean, I think that's named wrong. I think it should be mic one, two. What it does is it, it, it takes the output that you send to main one two anything you send there in fact i'll select i'll select it i'll select that as main one two so main one two goes there reappears here so what i'm sp i'm speaking comes there now if you select mix one two what will happen is that output is mixed with that output is mixed with mic one two so actually, this is, this is actually quite a good way I can show you. So if I select mix one, two there, I'm sending that to main out one, two, which is going through there. And as you can see now, I haven't got a mic plugged into that channel, but you can see the sound is actually coming in. It's muted. You get, you've got the signal because it combines whatever is sent to that with whatever goes into that first channel and it just mixes them together so you could use that as a possibly you could use that for streaming where you mix your system sound and your microphone into one audio signal which you then capture i don't really know why you would do that it doesn't doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense to me to do it that way let's turn that off and put it back on virtual so the virtual is instead of mixing it with a physical channel, it's actually a virtual channel, which I've selected here. And you can see now that's coming in, it's coming back in there. So it goes, it still goes to main at what out one, two, anything that goes out there is sent back to the computer through virtual one, two, and that's, that's potentially more useful uh, than than the other one because you can have a separate audio track so for example you can send your audio that you want to hear to main out one two and then it gets turned into a virtual signal which then obs can just pick up so that so th in a simplistic kind of way that's useful and by using the loop back in this way you could potentially route the sound into audition or studio one via voice meter that might give you the option to say connect your discord so some, if you're talking to people who are, sound really bad on discord and you want to 
do some fiddling around or you want to add the audio ducking as I've mentioned previous to make the other sounds reduce when people are talking then you can do all that in in audition or studio one and then bring it back into here and then send it onto your stream it's not that easy to do that with by connecting audition and studio one directly to your audio interface because the output signal is sent over agio which then can't be collected by obs uh, there are ways around it but this is probably the easiest one in terms of connecting it to voice meter that's pretty much it i mean it's a simple case of any input you can connect here if you want to and any output you can connect over there as usual if you found this video helpful please give it a like and uh, don't forget to follow the channel if you want to keep up on my next video and please consider following me on twitch and on twitter uh, also consider my checking out my patreon page i do a few extra videos on there uh, some scenes that are that don't make it into the final cut uh, occasionally some outtakes and some candid videos from time to time and i'll see you in the next video